In fewest moves after you solve F2 all minus one pair, then you want to make a skeleton, which solves most of the pieces, but not all of them. For F2 all minus one, you use these techniques to make it to save a lot of moves. For the skeleton, there's a lot of things you can do depending on the scramble, but I'll show you one reliable technique that can work if you don't know what to do. So if your top color is blue, you want all the blue edges facing up. So these are oriented or good edges, and they'll already be good edges if you've done edge orientation at the beginning of the solve. The explanation is in this video. So if you get to the stage and some blue edges are flipped, if you end up with a blue edge here, then what you can do is move it to the top such that blue ends up on top, because that's our top color, like that, and then replace it with any flipped edge. So this one or this one. And you can try them both to see which one ends up with a nicer solution in the end. So I'll just try replacing it with orange, like this. And then next we will move orange to the top and replace it with the other flipped edge. But we have to move orange to the top this way to get blue on top. Replace it with this one, and then come back down. So once all the edges on top are good, what we are looking for is two pieces that can be solved relative to each other, but the last one has to be wrong. And here's another example. These two pieces are correct if I do this, and this one is wrong. So if you do get this case, identify the one that is wrong and move it so that you are going to replace it with this one in the F2L slot. So move that up and then solve the F2L edge into the slot. If you do that correctly, all the edges will be solvable. And then we have one, two, three, four, five corners that are not solved. And this is a skeleton that will be solved using insertions. But if you get a case where it's not just one wrong edge, so these two are not solved relative to each other, neither are these two and neither are these two, then you're going to need a lot more moves to solve these edges. So ideally you should go back through your solution and try to do something different so that this doesn't happen. But if you have to solve this anyway, you could move this one up to replace any edge and bring in one of the wrong edges and see if that works. So now we have these two solved relative to each other, but the white one is not. So I only showed you how to make a five corner skeleton that sometimes gets lucky and skips from corners, so it could be four or three corners as well. I'll do a quick walkthrough of how to do insertions for three corners, five corners, but there are other types of skeletons. And if you're wondering how those come up, then I'll talk about them after insertions. Once you have your solution, write down the normal moves and then the reverse of the inverse moves, and that is your skeleton. So here I've done the scramble and the skeleton, and I've put stickers on the corners depending on where they should go. So I just put one wherever I want, see where that should go, and that is the yellow sticker, so it belongs right here. This is white, and so it belongs right here. This is white, so it belongs here. So the idea for how to solve this is we'll use a commutator. For example, two and one have an interchange right here. So what I could do is do the interchange and then insert three to one, which is method one of commutators. Or I can first insert three to one and then do the interchange, which is method two. So we're going to be looking for a commutator, but one that cancels a lot of moves depending on where we put it in the skeleton. And we can put it anywhere in the skeleton because a commutator only affects three pieces. So it doesn't matter when we solve it, it doesn't disturb anything else. So what you want to do is go through spots in the skeleton one by one to see where it cancels the most moves. I've gone backwards all the way to the beginning of the skeleton. So here I want to see if I can cancel some moves. And there's only a move coming after this, which is D prime. So I want a commutator that ends with some sort of D move. But first what we're going to do is check every possible commutator you can do to solve these. For example, interchange from one to two. That starts with R2 and then inserting three to one, starts with F and ends with F prime. Once you've made this in your head, you can see that the commutator will start with R2 and end with F prime, which means if we put it in the beginning of the skeleton, it will not cancel with a D prime move that is already there. Then we'll look at all other possible commutators we can do here and see if that happens. So it turns out no possible commutator here will cancel any moves, but I'll show you where it could. So we're going to go four moves into the skeleton. So here we have a one move interchange from one to two. So if we do that first, then we can then insert three into its spot at one using U R2 U prime. So if we look at that again, our commutator begins with L prime and ends with U prime. And we can see that if we put that in there, then the U prime will cancel with the U move already coming up. And U prime and U both being gone is a cancellation of two moves. So then I'd continue going through the rest of the skeleton, trying to cancel at least three moves. And as it turns out in this case, that is not possible and two moves is the best that I can do. Sometimes you can cancel more, sometimes you can't, it's just luck. So once you figured it out, normally what we do is write a little symbol there because it's easier to do on paper and then write what that symbol means, which is just writing out the entire commutator you're going to insert. And then to submit your solution, rewrite your skeleton, but write down the moves that go in there and cancel any moves that you can. Now let's look at a five corner skeleton. So before moving forward, if you're trying your own five corner skeleton, I recommend looking at the description to see what kind of five corner skeleton you have and what that requires. For example, a five cycle, which is what I have here, where I can number them so they all go to a different spot. This can be solved using an insertion of two commutators. But instead, if you have one of them is in its right spot, but twisted, you'll have to insert three commutators. In this case, we're going to have to insert two commutators, but there's a lot more options. And for example, if we just went through looking for one, two, three commutators, then we're going to end up solving one to two, solving two to three, 
but three will end up at one being unsolved. And then what happens afterwards is we only have this piece and four and five unsolved, which means after we do our first commutator, we'll only have one more commutator to do. And so we'll just go through and do insertions again. But we're not just looking at one, two, three. We could also look at two, three, four, or three, four, five, or four, five, one, or five, one, two. There's five possible three cycles you can insert at every point in the skeleton. So that sounds rough, right? But we're not actually going to do that. Because there's so many options, we can assume a large number of moves will be canceled. So with the assumption that you already know how to do insertions rather quickly, if you don't, maybe go through some practice three corner skeletons in the description. I'm gonna show you how I solve this five corner skeleton rather quickly. So here I am in the beginning of the skeleton. My next move is R2, and a trick for double moves is if you're doing corners, double moves have to be the interchange. You cannot begin or end on a double move if it's not the interchange. So can I end on an interchange of R2? Well, that doesn't interchange one and four. So I'm gonna skip this place because I'm not canceling any moves here because there's no way I can end a commutator using R2. Now I move two spots in and I realize that coming before this is U prime L prime. Maybe my commutator begins with LU. That would cancel away four moves. So I'm gonna try LU, LU. Now I have to think about what exactly this would be doing. So um, LU, once you have two moves, you can figure out exactly what that's actually doing. Either the first move is an interchange, which it's not because there's nothing interchanging here, or we're solving the odd piece here. So LU is LU, which means I have to end with L prime because that's just how these go. So if I'm doing LU L prime, that's inserting this two into here. That's not very useful because there's nothing here. So I know that I'm not canceling a lot of moves here. Okay, but this spot also ends with B prime R. Now the thing is to be thorough, I could try that as well, but if I'm trying to cancel a ton of moves at once, I actually don't need to try the ending. I only need to try the beginning. And the reason is a bit complicated, but if we assume I cancel the next move in the skeleton, then I can move one move over and I'll still find the same cancellation. So that's why I'm just going to move on from here. So I just use that technique leading all the way up to here. And here I noticed that my first two moves before the skeleton are F prime U. So reversing that, I get UF. If I can put UF here, I will cancel four moves right away. So I look at what those moves do. So starting with U, that interchanges three to five, which is useless because three doesn't go at five, but it also interchanges five to one. So if I were to do this as the first move of my commutator, the next move would be inserting four into five. Or I could do something with two because five, one, two is also a possible cycle, but two is in a weird spot where it's hard to insert here. So the next move for inserting four to five would be with F. In other words, F, D, F prime. But the point is it starts with F. So I have a commutator here that actually begins with U, F, which means F prime, U prime, U, F cancel to be no moves. And I'll just see how many moves this actually cancels in total. So if I do U, F, D, F prime, U prime, F, D prime, F prime, the next move coming up is also F prime. So F prime, F prime makes F two, and that cancels another move. But here what I do is go through the rest of the skeleton and see what I get. So if you've done that first commutator correctly, what should happen is only three corners are left unsolved. So what you can do is remove these stickers right here and just do a normal three corner skeleton. But make sure you write out a new skeleton before you do that. And the reason this is important is because now the moves in the skeleton have changed and you can try your three corner insertion at different spots. In the description, I've included examples of more insertions that I've done before, which isn't just three corners or five corners. So this last part of the video will be for how to get creative with making skeletons and what more can you do with insertions. So here's an example of a solve I was doing once. So I got to F12 minus one, I have this, and I have some bad edges. So I could correct the bad edges, but it's really important to try a bunch of things. So for example, obviously I tried solving the F12 pair in a few different ways, and I never really got anything that I found to be lucky. So what I ended up doing instead was just pairing up this F12 pair like this, and I was about to insert it. And then I noticed that these three pieces all got solved. And I noticed this edge was solved too. So really I'm not looking at the solved pieces, but the fact that a lot are solved means probably very few are unsolved. This edge, this edge, this edge, that's three edges. This corner, this corner, this corner, that's three corners. So from this stage where it often takes a lot of moves, I just did three more moves and that somehow gave me three corners and three edges. And in fewest moves, usually the thing you end up going with is not something you planned for because there are so many possibilities you can't really plan for something and have it work out the best every time. So with this solve, I just stickered up the edges, stickered up the corners and went through and inserted three corners and three edges both of them being commutators. And what ended up happening was I got a 25 move solution. Now I wanna show you some options that you won't often consider. So if you get to a point where you have an R perm and you know how to do insertion
versions, then you don't have to do the R perm. For example, if the R perm is from here and you only know how to do it in 13 moves, then you can also recognize that this is one, two, three corners unsolved and one, two, three edges unsolved. So you can try doing two insertions for edges and then corners and see if that works out any better. Or you can solve the blocks here and notice we have two edges unsolved and two corners unsolved. And you can instead solve this R perm using a J perm insertion somewhere in the skeleton. And now some algorithms that are very important to know for insertions. I talked about in this video that I inserted U2 M prime U2 M or some mirror or inverse of it to cycle three edges. Since in fewest moves, you have to write outer turns instead of M turns. This goes from four moves to six moves, but it's still better than a three edge commutator, which is 10 moves. So often in your skeleton, you won't get exactly that case, but you can get close to it and set up to it. And a few more edge things useful to know is U2 M2 U2 M2. And that swaps these two edges and these two edges. So if you get a skeleton that needs to Two edges swapped and two edges swapped, you can try this. And similarly, also six moves is R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U2, and that swaps these two edges and these two edges. Next is also the J perm, which is not just a J perm, but it's also two corners and two edges. So if you get a two corner, two edge skeleton, you can try inserting this 10 move J perm or its inverse. And there's no complete list of algorithms because there's so many things that you could possibly do, but I'll just link some more advanced ones in the description as well. So that's all the tips for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.